Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence and I'm so excited to do this video because I have made a spiritual breakthrough. Now, I believe in past videos I've discussed the one, which is the being that created all. The high being above all of what we call gods is the one that created everything. Well, before I have discussed that it is incredibly difficult to get to him because he is on such a high plane. And in order to meet him, you have to be of a balanced nature, a balanced spirituality. Um, the ones that are on his level are like spirit guides, guardian angels, things of that nature. They're on his level. They work basically for him, and I know I, I say him, that's just a default. He doesn't really have a gender, but um, it embodies everything in this universe, or some people believe multiverse. Well, I was able to briefly speak to someone, a spirit, who was an attendant of his, and I'm very, very, very excited about it. Um, so before bed, I decided to go into the astral and do a, a ritual to a goddess uh, that I have prayed to before. Her name is Karidwin. She is a goddess of transformation, so, and I was starting a new job so, I decided to do a ritual to her in the astral to kind of transition smoothly into this new job. And I wrote it down as soon as I was finished, and here's how it went. So, I entered the astral garden, and I changed the scenery, the scenery to match Bala Lake, which is where she supposedly lived many, many years ago, because she's actually supposedly based on a real enchantress. Uh, she was uh, a healer. She lived away from society with her family. So, and she lived near Bala Lake, which is in the northern part of England. Um, so I wanted a scenery to match where she was familiar with. I made an altar. It was like a marble stone altar to her in the middle of the lake. And... Um, let's see, I placed the altar in the middle of the lake and I had a cauldron, the cauldron of Awen, which Awen is a god of poetic inspiration, which is supposedly where she got her power from. She had the cauldron of Awen, which was basically a god in the form of a cauldron. Um, I had two white candles. I had the symbol of the triquetra, which is this symbol. Uh, it's more of a Celtic kind of symbol, but she used it as well. Uh, and I, I, like I had a pendant also of the Triquetra as well. I had a pine branch incense. I'm not, no, I had a pine branch because there were many pine trees near Bala Lake. Um, there were uh, I lit incense also, and as uh, gifts and offerings to her. Then I started to contact Karidwin and Alwyn for positive change and transformation. Um, then she appeared, and she was a younger kind of woman. She had long uh, black hair that was sort of wavy. She wore this very long cloak that kind of draped farther than her own body was. So it was much longer than she was. She was floating above me at the center of this lake. And she used the power of all Awen. And how I know this was that the symbol of Awen, which is this symbol, it appeared as like a magical rune in the center. And she did this. And the symbol was right in the middle of her hands. And all of a sudden, she like sent it toward me. And all of a sudden, I felt this powerful, uplifting energy. 
and all of a sudden I started floating very, very fast and very, very high above the altar, and soon it was like shrinking down because I was getting farther and farther away, and all of a sudden I was like in the cosmos, in space. I could see myself flying high in the middle of the cosmos, and it was very, very incredible. <clears throat> Uh, then all of a sudden, I stopped and I was just floating in the middle of this vast void. I could see stars and planets. And this woman came towards me from out of nowhere. And she was a shorter kind of woman. Uh, let's see. Um, and I wrote this down exactly as I remembered it because I wrote this down right away after the meditation. So she was short in stature. She had a long nose. She had green skin and wore an oversized military jacket. And she spoke with a heavy British accent. And she was, she called herself special someone. That's all she would refer to herself as, special someone. She identified herself as an assistant to the one and she told me that she wanted me to know that the one, the one basically relayed a message to her to give to me. And um, apparently he told her to tell me that it wasn't his job to judge or criticize my actions and that my freedom was my own and to make any of the decisions that I wanted to make. Um, because I, I'm a very existential person, so oftentimes I wonder if I'm going in the right path, if I'm doing the right thing, like a lot of people who have existential souls have, uh, a lot of questions that they have. And it says, it was, um, she told me that it wasn't for him to criticize or judge my actions and to just do what I felt was right, because that's all a part of the human experience, the spirit's experience. Um, that's kind of the point of reincarnation, to learn different lessons, do as we do, make decisions, whether we view them as good or bad, to make them as we see fit. And the part of living again and again and again is to, like tamper our spirits to become better. And then after she told me that, I could feel Alwyn's magic leave me and all of a sudden I was like dropping down and floating back down to the altar that I had made for um, Karidwin and Alwyn. Uh, I sank back down to the altar and Karidwin was still there. I thanked her and she agreed to help me with transitioning into this new job, which I've been at the job for three weeks now, and it has been a smooth transition. Training is very slow and steady. We are slow right now at work, so um, training is much easier because apparently they are a lot busier than they um, are now. So it's been a smooth transition, so it has worked and uh, I'm very grateful to Karidwin and Alwyn, and I thank them very much for giving me that opportunity and allowing me to experience what I was able to experience. So I was very excited when I got out of the meditation and I wrote down everything as quick as I could because I didn't want to forget it. And I wanted to make a video about it because I, uh, I consider myself a spiritual scientist where I'm trying to find the truth, I'm trying to find new results and solutions based on magic and um, the universe, find out the secrets of the universe. And for me to experience that was incredible because I believe I've said this, um, all of my attempts to reach the, the one previous to this have been unsuccessful no matter how much energy I've tried to manifest and how many times I've tried to contact the one, it has not worked. So, to, even though I wasn't able to talk to him, I was able to talk to someone who assisted him, a spirit of his that helped him along, and the fact that he was able to give a message to me, that he acknowledged me, was incredible. And I was 
very, very excited, and I still am. And I hope that this can help me in my spiritual path. And for anyone else who is thinking the same way that I do, that are they doing the right thing? Are they moving in the right direction in life? And I'm going to relay what the one had relayed to me, that do what feels right in your heart. Whether the decision is of a good nature or bad nature, or you're doing what you think is right, this is all part of our nature to make decisions, to mess up, to learn from these experiences. And I know this is a lot for people to handle because a lot of people are like, well, what if we're making the bad decision? What if we're acting under evil judgment and stuff like that? It's still all a part of life's journey. <clears throat> so if you're making a lot of bad decisions and it's affecting a lot of people's lives, the one may send an angel down to you to, you know, talk to you if you choose to accept the message. Or they may not because you are still on your um, journey and the one doesn't really like to get his hands into anyone else's life. He doesn't like to mess with people's journey too much. He may send angels down from time to time to guide you in another direction. But all in all, whether it leads to your destruction or your success, he doesn't like to get his hands dirty in this. So whether you mess up or not, whether it's the right decision that you feel in your heart or not, it's a learning experience. It's a lesson. And this might be a lot for people to handle because we as humans like to view things as either good or evil. When in truth, there is yin and yang. There's no real right way to do life, no matter how you see it or not. There is no like written rule from the one above how to live life. You just live it. And you go based on what your heart says. And you follow your gut feeling. Some people don't. Some people do. But either way, it's a learning experience. And I just wanted to relay that, guys, to you based on how it was to me. So I want to thank you guys for listening in and hearing me out on this incredible discovery, this incredible breakthrough. I'm so happy about it. Hopefully I can get in contact with the one in future endeavors. But until then, you know, I'll... Keep working on it and let you know if I make any other breakthroughs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you don't miss any of my future uploads, especially if I make another breakthrough. Um, have a good spiritual path, everyone.